<laughs> he went straight to the top. Uh, oh, he's out of fire. I think uh, Artem Kasparian is uh, is a man who uh, who tries to understand life, who tries to, who tries to be the best uh, man he could be, you know, for himself, for his family, for his friends, the people he loves. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, that's the most important thing about Artem Kasparian. Doesn't work well, man. <laughs> Artem is as well wearing the black flash. Uh... He doesn't have no brakes. <laughs> Born in the 90s, and the 90s was, uh, you know, after the the fall of the Soviet Union, it was a chaotic situation in in uh, in Russia. So, like, and my parents, as Armenians, lived in in Russia. So, I, and I was born over there. So, uh, you no, know, it was it was dangerous. It was chaotic, uh, hunger, you know, and. Uh, a lot of uh, criminals and stuff, and uh, um, yeah, it was a lot of shit going on, you know. So when we, uh, well, my parents decided to to move, you know, to uh, come to Europe. Um, so the, when we came to Europe, we didn't know anyone, and my, well, my father was here. He came as at first and then after after I think one year then we came to uh, to Europe you know my father he came to uh, to Germany at, at first he was in Germany and then uh, we had some some uh, friend friend of his and um, you know family members they were in, in the Netherlands so they said hey man come come to the Netherlands we're here as well you know, so we can help you. So my father moved to to the Netherlands. Went went on to the Netherlands, and then we came after. Uh, yeah, it was a hard journey because, you know, when we left, we didn't really knew if we would see our family in Russia again. Yeah, eventually we came to the Netherlands, and um, when we were here, we lived like seven or eight years we live in different refugee camps you know like the really the, the camps and it's really international over there a lot of uh, nationality people from all over the world like like people with family people without family like uh i don't know there might be some some criminals in between them, you know, some terrorists maybe. You, you never know, you know, the people over there, there were a lot of crazy people living there. The thing was, when we lived in the camp, you could, they could like easily come in the, in the night, like four in the night or five, come to your house, bam, 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 and say, hey man, you have to leave. Take your stuff, you have one hour or two hours. Take your stuff, and we're taking you. Uh, I don't know, or or they put you on the street, or they put you on the airplane and go. <laughs> so that was the most, you know, most uh, scary thing, actually. Yeah.
<laughs> almost, we're almost there. <laughs> See, I let all my shit, I let it in. <laughs> are, you, are you training now? Yeah, this my, it's my, uh, it's mine. I let them here, man. Don't, so, I, so that I don't take them home. You know, they, they smell even food. <laughs> my gloves, everything, all the gear is over there. <laughs> This is lekker. This is lekker. This is echt lekker. You're filming my sausage, man. <laughs> Don't do that. Ga ze even zitten. Ja, het is goed. Mag alleen maar niet onder jou. Dat is zo I was maybe 12. We, we get the permission to stay in the Netherlands. You know, when we were we were really poor. You know, my parents were we were poor in the in the camps as well, and we got the permission to stay in the Netherlands. And you know, in the refugee camps, you won't have no documents, nothing. So you can't do sports, you can't work, you can't go any, anywhere where you have to fill in something, you know, about uh, like name, family and stuff. Uh, so you cannot do, do anything. So um, when we got the permission to stay, we thought we were like really happy. We thought, yes, our lives are going to change right now. From this point, we will uh, like go out of the camp, live in the like more free in the free world, uh, in the in the society, you know. And uh, but we were wrong. <laughs> See, when I went to school, um, because of my behavior, I went to a special school for kids with special needs. It was a school with kids, all all kinds of kids. There were kids doing drugs, and there were kids like small girls they, that uh, were prostitutes. There were kids who were criminals, they did drug deal, dealing, stealing, other crazy shit. So I was at school with this kind of uh, people, you know, kids. And really, some kids had really problems. You know, at first, I. I could understand that they put me in this kind of school, but it was not really my place. It was not really my place. So this uh, this kind of situation, and because we were sitting there and doing nothing, uh, we, we were getting bored, and we just walked out of the class, and we're doing all the crazy stuff again, you know, searching for something to do, you know, to yeah, keep busy. <laughs> And then we were yeah, doing crazy stuff, all kinds of crazy stuff. And you see, that's where I got more aggressive, I got more aggressive. I got problems with teachers. I had even fights with teachers. I fought with grown men, you know. Uh, I just fought them. Didn't give a shit. Because, you know, I was aggressive. Of all the situation, I had old, uh, old clothes. You know, I had no phone, no, nothing that other kids had. You know, we were living we, poor. We didn't have really money. We can't, couldn't go on vacations. We couldn't go out. You know, that's it. It was, and every day was the same. And we live. We came. They put us in a small village, in a small racist village, very racist village. And we as foreigners, you know, we were like, they were really looking at us. Sometimes, uh, really, they were, sometimes there, was, there were people really, really aggressive against us, always, always making trouble and stuff like that. 
This, is, this was the life I lived for years. I lived this kind of life, always like that. I, I didn't really have friends over there. It was in a small village and racist village. So no, not really. There were a lot of kids. They don't wanted to be friends. There were some, some people who wanted to be, but their parents wouldn't permit it. Like my normal day, like almost every day, was like this. In the morning, I went to school. I had problems at school that day. I went back home. I came home. I ate something. I went to my room. I was laying on the bed, and I was looking upstairs. I was looking upstairs like this and I was thinking, oh man, when is, th when is this day over? When is this month over, this year? So that maybe after a year something will change, something will happen. And that was, this was the thing I did almost every day. I was laying like this eventually. I started to, uh, I got uh, a heavy bag on my birthday for my father and uncle, who were boxers and when they were young. They gave me a, a gift, a heavy bag. And I started you know, to mess around, like hitting the bag. And then uh, I started running. I got a jump, jump rope. I started to jumping. So that was, I came back. Ate something, lay on my bed, look at upstairs, and then I stand up, put my clothes on, went running, hitting the bag, uh, take a shower, and then uh, again looking upstairs, maybe eat something, go to the toilet, and again. And th this was this was the whole day. I didn't have friends, no contacts, no people to talk with. No, not no social life. There was no social life, so I was always on my own. Like, yeah, it was a little bit lonely, I can say. You know? Yeah, you know, when uh, right now I'm I'm older, my brother is older, so we both um, how to say we can work. Our parents couldn't work. We can work. We can uh, build our our own life. Mm -hmm. So right now it's all on us. So when we were kids, it wasn't. It was our lives were on our parents' shoulders, you know? mm. and right now it's all on us mm. and their life as well. So we take care. Uh, we take care at, at first, of course, we take care of ourselves, uh, and then 
every extra we can do, we, we do for our parents as well.